What happened when Claude Shannon flipped a switch? Think of a switch or relay as a drawbridge for an electrical current. Closed, the switch would allow the current to pass on to its destination. Open, the switch would stop the current in its tracks. The destination might be another relay, which would then open or close on the basis of the input it received. Or it might, in the easiest example, be something as simple as a little electric light. All of this was second nature to Shannon. From as far back as the Gaylord Western Union office and his barbed wire network, and it was systematized for him in Ann Arbor, where he dutifully drew circuit diagrams along with the rest of the electrical engineers. Series. The current has to pass through both of two switches before it illuminates the light. Parallel. The current is free to pass through either or both. These were the blocks that comprised the hundred-switch logic box attached to the differential analyzer, or the electric guts of assembly lines, or the million relay system that controlled the nation's telephone network. There were circuits built to transmit a current when two switches were closed, but not zero, or one, or three. There were circuits drawn as branching trees, or symmetrical deltas, or dense meshes, an entire electric geometry that Shannon had learned by heart. And, in the old tradition of engineers, it was all rigged by hand, drawn step by step on blackboards, or just soldered together in the belly of the machine, the only proof of the circuit's rightness in the tangible results, whether the call went through, whether the wheel spun edgewise on its disc, whether the light lit. Circuits before Shannon were like differential equations before the analog computer. Errors for every trial, until the errors stopped, and nothing any cleaner. Building circuits in those days was an art, with all the mess and false starting and indefinable intuition that art implies. But here was Shannon, shut in a room with a machine built to automate thought, built, in the name of industry and efficiency, to remove the art from math. And in the midst of his work, he came to understand that he knew another way of automating thought, one that would ultimately prove far more powerful than the analog machine.